Okay, so we are watching Sako battling Arbiter in a tournament. It will be an interesting match, I think. Also, both of the players know each other's playstyle, so that makes it even more interesting. Okay, Instapic Rhino spec. Sacco's options are really bad here. I think he should, yeah, go speed spec and fang all in. I'm gonna hide the chat. So Arbiter is doing a classic ball push. And I imagine Sakko is going all in on the fangs. And the position of the fangs here is extremely important so you don't get replicated by the crawlers. Oh, he's not going carry fangs. Interesting. Very interesting. Hello everybody. In the chat. I can't read the chat. That much I don't have my second monitor up no right now. It was so uh, extempora cast. This is kind of funny because Arbiter plays like this. He ex uh, deploy stuff in the center and tries to pull everything here. And so, so they are using like each other's tactics. I think this position favors Arbiter by a lot here. Like Sako's towers are so vulnerable to mobile beacon. But the unit composition of Sako is better. And he's playing defensive speed spec, which is not uh, not an optimal thing. Like he isn't using his speed at all. And Arbiter gets basically a free Rhino. I would assume both big haste module. And Sakko here needs to defend this and this other voice. These guys come through with mobile beacon. So he can't reinforce the center anymore. No jump drive also. And I don't think Arbiter needs to worry about flanks that much here. Because he's so in Sakko's face. So we get on the air for the Phoenixes. Did Sako skip the item? Yeah. So Sako skipped the item to have 450 gold so he can deploy two of these guys. And I, Arbiter would have probably done two Mustangs, but he felt like Haste Module and one Mustang is better. Same situation here. And I'm not sure if the Sledge is a good response here, but in theory it, it is. Good versus Balls and good versus Mustangs, which he was expecting. And there have been a lot of talk about the new raid unit. And uh, I think th this would be an okay situation for the raid. If Arbiter would go the raid here. Because it destroys sledges. Really well. Sako does have phoenixes to counter that though.
this amp core for both for sure, right? Not even close. Or maybe Sako could go Wasp's farm here. Ah, it's kind of close. But now these balls are looking really, really scary. Or is it Elite Hacker? I don't think so. It's for sure too early to pick Elite Hacker, right? Or I don't know, maybe it could be good here. Like one elite hacker here, it wouldn't be bad, right? But he's so open here, so open here, so open here. I'm really surprised uh, Arbiter isn't using mobile beacons. But uh, yeah, so there's the wasps. But he was struggle on, struggling on gold because of he picked the haste module, so he couldn't afford the beacon last turn. Like I think a very reasonable play would be not to develop this flank, skip the haste module and put one mustang here, one uh, crawler here and mobile beacon them last turn. But it's... I don't know. It's risky. I think this is a bad play from Arbiter. I think he should have uh, upgraded the towers and deployed units forward or just take the loss of the round without upgrading anything, just lose the round completely. He's playing so far in front and now he's also having units in the back that do nothing. This is skip, should be skip for boats. It's too early for any kind of spells. An improved fortress isn't good. But now is the Arbiter's power turn with the Rhino. Ah, I have some... Uh, no mic text in the screen. Now it's removed. So Sako does have a charge shot on his phoenixes. And he's building more phoenixes. Interesting. I think the this this strategy looks very good against Arbiter's board, but I don't like like it. Because Arbiter could just sell the balls and go fortresses with anti-air, especially if Sako builds one more phoenix and upgrades charge shot, then it's he insta loses to forge here. So I think the Sako strategy has, has some serious problems here. But this round it should be strong unless this tower falls and I suspect it will fall. big missile here but I think the missile would have been better on this side to kill the tower faster So Arbiter is just running through Sakko's army here. The sledges aren't doing that much. <laughs> well, this is very unlucky for Sakko because... Uh, it's a very strong Mustang item and... 
I think going armor this turn on the sledges would be really good for Sako. But now Arbiter has the... We'll get the big item here. Oh, he didn't take it. That's crazy. I think he for sure needs to take the Mustang item here. Maybe he just doesn't believe in the Mustangs against uh, the Sledges. Oh, Sakko goes for the armor, okay. Still, like this is a really strong play, but it gets completely negated by the Mustang item. So I think both players made some mistakes here, like the mistake of Arbiter was to not pick the damage item and the mistake of Sako was to go armor into the damage item, but it all worked out for Sako. And now comes the charge shot. And now if Arbiter has the time, this is a perfect time to be selling these uh, balls and going Fortress on the air. The phoenixes are destroying everything and the mustangs are stuck but the flanks comes through was there a new rhino deployed sako still wins the round even though the flank got through Both these items or these are pretty good. <laughs> he really wants to kill. But this is... Uh, the damage item is pretty negated here. Because it's just added to the 175%. So this damage item is actually like plus 33% more. Attack. What did uh, Arbiter take? So there was a Rhino here. Yeah, I think this needed to be a Fortress turn. Okay. Let's see if this works. I have not enough experience with the War Factory to know if this is good or not, but... Well, that's a unit at least. And he's not believing in the Mustangs at all. He's not upgrading them, he's not picking items in for them. I guess Sako will, will win this round still, but I'm not sure. These are the itemized phoenixes. They do a lot of damage though. The War Factory will win in the end. Okay. I wouldn't have expected that. And now when he levels to level 2, Sako really can't kill it. Like, he needs a melter here, for sure. And his board is uh, 
not so good setup for melters. Interesting. How much damage will this do? 14,000 if it's upgraded. Super heavy melting points. I think that's a reasonable choice. These phoenixes would get uh, distracted. One fang back here would pull, I think, two or three phoenixes and probably kill them. In the flank, I mean, here. An arbiter is going steel ball production. And probably next turn, mechanical div division. Let's see if the war factory will carry this round also. This might go through. Or are the phoenixes too powerful? The melter will connect soon. Now this will get the tower right. It's a very good timing. This war factory was in trouble. I have fought a lot versus level 2 war factories and, and uh, one melting point doesn't even kill it. You need like two level 1 melters or three or level 2 melters. It's crazy strong. I think Arbiter could have gotten the tower with deployment module. Like, redeploy these guys here, put mobile beacon here, and deploy stuff here and here. But it's a bit risky. It's a bit risky play, and he, I think he doesn't need to go for ris risky plays. He can just play uh, safe with the factories. <laughs> Multi melter. I don't think this will work, but let's see. This strategy is pretty good versus war factories because it kills everything they spawn, but the problem is. If Sako wins this round and next round Arbiter, for example, sells the Rhino and goes one melting point with range himself, then these melters will just cry. But let's see, I'm kinda curious if they can bring this round home. No, they can't. This side will go through, right? The balls will carry. And our biter wins the first game. So it's a best of three. One or two games to go. Nice war factory place.
But to be honest, Sako had so bad specialist last game that now with the supply spec is really good here. It has quite low HP, but premium units and one of the best specialists. And Arbiter has some interesting options. Like these two, these two packs are good. And he goes for the Rhino. He didn't believe in the carry fang. Aerial spec. What? He took aerial spec? Okay. Well, I guess it's reasonable. It's like 1100 health more. And the unit pack is okay. Hopefully this won't be raid gaming. I know Sako has been doing a lot of them in the past week. But he said himself that the unit is complete garbage, so... Let's see... If he's crazy, crazy enough to pull it here. So it's standard... Ball push, right? It's, it's kind of funny, it's... It's the same formation that Arbiter was using. I think Arbiter's balls were one square forward. And Arbiter guessed correctly which side Sako is pushing. This could be a lot better for Sako if these positions were reversed. Because the balls would always get both of the towers and get some levels. The levels on the phoenixes are not that important, but the levels on the balls can snowball the game. No, he doesn't get them, so it's it was kind of a big 50-50 flip for Ar Arbiter here. Like Sako's scaling is stopped in its tracks. Also, the Phoenix opening is really good for Arbiter, because Sako is aerial specialist and uh, he can't really go air this, this turn. Well, actually, <laughs> he just go for it. I would be cu curious to know if, it, if this play works, but I know it won't work, so I'm a bit disappointed in this start. Already. So he favors field maintenance over armor and he doesn't have AG on the rate. This technology is really powerful once the rates get leveled. And I think the Degeneration beam is, is the most powerful technology if it isn't countered, but it's countered by photon, so it's best to use as a like a scare. So the enemy might overreact to it. Yeah. This is what I would have liked Arbiter to do in the first game as well. Just abuse this position. And is this gonna be charge shot arc lights? I really don't like this arc light start versus uh, aerial specialist. But uh, the position favors Arbiter so heavily that he can do whatever he wants, I think. I think this is a skip or maybe a barrier. I don't think you need speed specialist because of the deployment. Shields 
shield device specialist might be okay for Sako. It's one of the things that can uh, like make him come back into the game. Okay, Arbiter goes for Barrier. I would imagine he is holding it this turn. And then next turn going some kind of giant, probably a melting point. And I think this kind of uh, Phoenix flank, yeah, th this is a good play, but he should deploy something here. And the phoenixes should be probably like here. And there should be an arc light here, I think. Oh, okay, fang. Yeah, this is a very good play from our oh, boat. From Arbiter. His flanks are open. This should probably be moved. I think he should do the beacon like he here just to kill the raid. But these are always a bit of a camp gamble because you don't know where the enemy will uh, deploy his units. Like he could deploy here, he could deploy here, here. But it's a good setup because Sako is building expensive units, the raids, right? And he needs technologies for them and stuff like that. So Arbiter is attacking in multiple fronts to keep Sako guessing. Like Sako needs to spend all his money deploying all kinds of bad units everywhere and he can't focus on his, his raids. Oh, Sako took the speeds back, actually. I wonder if the range spec is needed for the raids. Like, the raid and balls are actually quite good with the range spec, but it's so early to take it. Yeah, he didn't take it. I don't like this Rhino at all, because the Phoenixes can be leveled and just put here. Still holding the barrier. Is this gonna be a melting point this turn? I think if you go melting point you need the charge shot to kill the balls. Fortress. Is that a good idea? I don't know. I don't think Arbiter should have picked the barrier item. I get baited by it a lot myself also because it's so strong but in this situation I don't think you want to be building early giants against balls and aerial spec. Yeah, this this usually is a better beacon because they will shoot this guy before moving out. Oh, they went too forward. That's a bit unlucky. Okay, the fortresses are actually tanking enough. They killed the balls. Yes, they weren't leveled at all. So that's why Arbiter is winning this so heavily. Arbiter also has Ignite on Fangs. And I think uh, Fang Ignite is really good versus the raids. If they start leveling, you could go like Fang summoning and Ignite in this situation. 
I believe the anti-air barrage is not that good versus the raids, but I haven't tested it. Someone just said it was bad. Because I, I thought it was good against them. Then I asked and I was told that it's actually really bad. So I am not sure. Yeah, this is what I was talking about in the like round two that this degeneration beam acts as a scare. Like a, I think Arbiter is doing the photon boat just because of this technology that isn't even text. And Sako goes for the carry. It's really early though. I think like one more raid is just better than this technology. Or this is the like damage of four raids, but the hit points of two raids. And one more raid is 100 cheaper and uh, Yeah, they do nothing against the fortress. If the balls die, this, this guy isn't carrying enough. It's just a bad unit. Like, look at this. I think the start of Sako was... Like, this kind of composition. Balls with raid. The raid level really fast. They need only a little bit of experience, so I think that what's What's happened here is that uh, Sako couldn't scale in the in the early game, and then his army just wasn't strong enough. So Arbiter wins 2-0. A bit of a sad game.